On the air with us, Vicki, we have Mason County Commissioner Kevin Schutte. Morning, Kevin. Good morning, Good morning Kevin. Morning, Vicki. How are you? Good. First Good. things first, we talked to Senator Sheldon just uh, last half hour, and I know uh, prior to sitting in the commission seat, you worked over at the legislature, uh, and they're talking about c cleaning it up a little bit and, and uh, the looks there. Is that a topic of conversation that goes on, the coming in, you look at the dome, and it... I mean, we can all admit that it looks pretty grungy yeah. these days, yeah. but uh, is that something you guys talked about? You know, uh, not while I was there. Certainly, uh, you know, I think probably uh, probably after the Nisqually quake uh, several years ago, there was an opportunity probably to take a look at some of, you know, the uh, cleaning it up yeah. and you know, beautifying it a little bit. Um, but I, I saw Senator Sheldon's bill last week, and I... I had to chuckle a little bit. It was it was very well worded, uh -huh. <laughs> um, and I I kind of joked to some friends that I still have down there that uh, if this all goes through, that I might be able to make a claim for accelerated hair loss <laughs> while I work down there. So I uh, I'm I'm, I'm going to be watching this one uh, pretty closely. So. And regardless of what happens, it's good to have the conversation. And like he mentioned, there are you know thousands of people that come, especially during session every sure. day to the to. The grounds are beautiful. The right. dirty building. And the, every other portion, the new buildings look great. Yeah. Uh, the mm -hmm. fountain, the Trivoli fountain looks nice. Beautiful and the air. sunken gardens. And then you look up, and yeah. it sometimes gets lost in the gray of the day. Yeah. Right. Sometimes. Right. Yeah. And, and it's a – it's a for those of you that have been there, and, and, and if you haven't, I encourage your listeners to, to go yeah. and visit this time of year is – Particularly exciting as the legislature continues to, to finish their work, but uh, there is not a time of the year where it's 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 not a beautiful place to be, and, yeah. and it's an incredible place to work, um, and and that's uh, not just the aesthetics, but the people that work there on, on both sides of the the aisle. All right, they um, deserve and, better. That's yeah, right. You know. We have help. these conversations here locally too about you know how do we kind of preserve and maintain our buildings as as you know your listeners might not know, but we have a big campus. Uh, we have a lot of county buildings, yeah. um, and, and part of our responsibility is maintaining those and keeping them uh, you know, safe and, uh, and and even, when possible, aesthetically uh, pleasing. So yeah. I didn't realize you'd have to write a bill to get the building cleaned. Well, I, I think it's just to kind of bring the attention like, more than no. anything, but mm -hmm. yeah. they, have, mm -hmm. they may have some of the funds there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just the side picture from, like, this past week to 2012, I think, when it was fully clean, it's just it, it just looks beautiful. Yeah. Kind of this adds a little certain something. Yeah, certainly yeah, should be very should proud be. of that building. Yeah, it should be pretty. Yesterday we had Karen Leaf and Jennifer Barria from the EDC on, and they started to talk to us about economic opportunity mm -hmm. zones. And I was uh, following along as best I could uh, after this was this come out in the in the federal tax right. bill. Right. So late last year, there was a federal tax package that was passed. Uh, depending on which side of the uh, political spectrum you're on. There were things to like and there were things to not like. Part of our job as local leaders is to take a look at it objectively and see if there are any items in there that could be beneficial to our local communities. And one of the things that I stumbled upon uh, a few weeks ago was the provision uh, and the creation of economic opportunity zones. These zones are uh, developed based on census data, demographic data that uh, mostly highlights uh, distressed communities throughout the country. Um, Washington State, I believe, has uh, right around 450 or 500 of these uh, so-called distressed communities, both urban and rural. Um, <clears throat> and so it's, it's, an, it's a chance for us to, uh, to get some private dollars invested in, in our community and, and really help spur some economic growth and development. Uh, so I did some research and talking with uh, some local some local folks here, including the EDC, I went to them with this last week, and uh, they were they were uh, excited to learn more about the program, uh, as everybody was that I had conversations with. And then ultimately, uh, they did provide a letter of support to, to send to the governor to uh, have him uh, consider Mason County. Kind of how this is going to work uh, is it's for investors that have uh, unrealized capital gains uh, dollars that. Uh, they would be uh, taxed on, okay. <clears throat> and it, it allows them to invest those uh, dollars in what's called opportunity funds, which then gives them a, uh, a, a tax break, um, but it allows for funding to go directly into communities like ours that need it. Oh, cool. Uh, okay. And so the state governors are, are tasked in the legislation to uh, review uh, their census-designated tracts and 
ultimately uh, nominate 25% of their state's areas for uh, consideration in the program. So we're really optimistic. I had a conversation yesterday with our county commission and uh, commissioners uh, Drexler and Netherland were uh, excited and, and supportive of this. And so we drafted a letter as well, and, and we're going to be voting on that uh, this morning at our commission meeting. So really looking forward to putting this on the governor's desk. Uh, letting him know that, uh, you know, in the past he has uh, supported some economic revitalization efforts here in Shelton and in Mason County, uh, particularly when the Simpson Mill closed yeah, uh, yeah, a few years ago. Um, and so we're asking him to once again uh, keep Mason County in mind. Um, we have some exciting things happening, and I think having a, a little bit of a, an additional investment opportunity from some outside private dollars would, would help uh, maybe turn the tide for us. Absolutely. <clears throat> you were with the governor last week. You were there? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, as, as a member of the Legislative Steering Committee for the State Association of Counties, uh, during session I have an opportunity to go down to Olympia every other week and work with county commissioners and council members from across the state. Uh, we, hear, we hear a lot from legislators, um, but the governor uh, was able to join us last week. And so really a good opportunity for us to sit down and talk with Governor Inslee about the mental health issues and opioid issues in our community. And I think there is those two areas there are places where we can uh, find a lot of agreement um, yeah. on, on getting help from the state and being able to utilize some even federal resources to help. One of the areas that was a little concerning to me was uh, his proposed carbon tax. Sure. Since that meeting, it's, it's become clear that that bill isn't going to move. But my concerns about that were that it, it since it's a, a tax on emissions, um, it, it would make it more expensive for us to respond to emergencies. Think about how much gas we put into police cars. Um, it would make road work more expensive. So think about your public works dump trucks and how much it costs to buy uh, chip silk and asphalt and mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. And so counties have a lot of concerns about some of those issues around the carbon tax. Uh, it's a worthwhile conversation to have. Certainly we have to have a conversation around climate change and how to address some of those issues. But we also want to make sure that we're not burdening local governments who provide critical public safety services uh, and making those more expensive. One of the things that Senator Sheldon had talked about early in our conversations <clears throat> this session was about that carbon tax. And he wanted to have the opportunity to kind of keep it in-house. Mm -hmm. So he knew uh, what was in the legislation. He knew that if there was a $10 per ton or whatever tax that it would go here and there. And one of the concerns he had was that if it were to die in the legislature, which it appears to mm -hmm. have, that the initiative process by the people mm -hmm. would take over mm -hmm. and maybe make even more extreme um, demands mm -hmm. on how we pay for sure. things like that. You see that? Yeah, and that, I mean, I, I certainly, you know, I, I understand where Senator Sheldon's coming from on that. I do. Um, and that's a real... I don't want to call it a risk because anytime you get people involved in the process, uh, you know, they're, they're going to bring forward ideas and those ideas are going to need to be refined. And ultimately, the legislature would have another chance to weigh in on that if uh, if it came to an initiative and passed. Okay. Um, but I, I think just sort of there's the political side of that and then there's the policy side of it. And certainly from the policy side of it, we had a lot of concerns at the local level about what it would do to our ability to, to fund basic public safety, public works projects and, uh -huh. and just day to day activity. What else uh, did you talk with, uh, have a chance to talk with the governor about? <clears throat> well, we, we continue to have these conversations around um, funding local yeah. uh, local work um, and, and getting some uh, reform around revenue at the state level. Um, we see this a lot, and it's not a popular thing to talk about, but in particular around public defense where, um, and, 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 and really throughout the whole criminal justice system where counties do the work for the state. Uh, if you go, if, if you look at a, criminal docket in the Superior Court, it's the state of Washington versus whoever. It's not Mason County. Mm -hmm, and right. so we do a lot of work on behalf of the state um, that, that we're, we're hoping to get some agreement around. How do we fund that? Yeah. So a lot of positive conversations with him. I appreciated his time. He took uh, well over 30 minutes with us, and which governors are busy people. Yeah. So we, oh, we certainly nice. appreciated his time. And I, I think it was a pretty candid conversation. So. Uh, let's talk about uh, school safety. Yeah. Had uh, Commissioner Netherland on Friday and uh, Sheriff Salisbury on yesterday with a couple of superintendents from the various school districts. Uh, the proposal that Commissioner Netherland put forth and just some ideas on how we can uh, make sure that all the schools are safe in sure. the county. 
Well, school safety is is a uh, an issue that we shouldn't take lightly. We uh, the issues that we saw in Parkland uh, recently. Certainly, we know what happened. Uh, thankfully, a, a false alarm of sorts in the North Mason School District, where my wife is a school nurse, so I have a uh, you oh, know a personal connection yeah. to that. You know, that aside from scary. aside from uh, you know my responsibility as a commissioner, there's a personal understanding. And prior to getting into politics, I was actually a school teacher myself. So, having been in a classroom, that's one thing that is that is always on the back of your mind. Not that it dominates your your work or your life, but right. it's a real concern. And so we have to work towards addressing it. Um, I know you had Representative Griffey on yesterday, and he talked about a legislative request to fully fund school resource officers statewide. I think that's something that needs to happen on a state level, and, and I appreciate him bringing that forward. And I hope I hope that's something that comes back I agree next too session. With that. I'm just thinking about this as <clears throat> it would really uh, benefit the wealthier school districts they would probably be a little more flush with cash mm -hmm. to yes. in order to afford these types mm -hmm. of resource officers here mm -hmm. in the county some of the smaller districts and even other school districts if it was a statewide mandate mm -hmm. maybe yes. through state sure. patrol or something right. that would give sure. all schools equal access to this and i think i think too and and it, one of the concerns that i've had over this past week with how the proposal has been rolled out is it's been out for a week, number one, and the conversations have centered around should this have been done through a news release or is this more of an opinion you know, op-ed kind of thing. Yeah. We've also had conversations that have dominated this about you know, how many chiefs are in the sheriff's yeah. office. And frankly, we need, to, we need to get rid of those conversations because those conversations don't make students safer. They don't make schools safer. We need to have everybody from the law enforcement community, the school community, come into the commission, sit down with us, and work through the policy. That's what needs to happen here, is, is we can't have these sort of peripheral, sideshow kind right. of conversations yeah. because they're not making kids safer. No. The sheriff's office has done, uh, I think, a lot of work in the past year. Uh, certainly, Deputy Colbinson being in the schools is, is a tremendous asset for the community. Mm -hmm. He does a fantastic job. Last year, we had an opportunity to... Um, enter into a partnership with North Mason School District that would have brought about $80,000 into the county budget line item for a full-time school resource officer. They were willing to, to pay uh, into a program there. Unfortunately, we weren't able to get enough support for that and pass it into the final budget. That's disappointing to me. We could have addressed this at least in part last year. So it, we're, we're past time for having this conversation, um, and I, I really hope that we can get away from the, the conversations around different offices staffing, as well as how this was released. I think it's a, I, I appreciate Commissioner Netherland wanting to have this conversation, now let's do it. And so yesterday in our briefings, that was that was my call to the commission was, there's not a whole lot we can accomplish, the three of us in this room, unless we get law enforcement and schools in the room to tell us what kind of programming they want and need, mm -hmm. and then we have to figure out how to fund it. Mm -hmm. Very Mason good. County Commissioner Kevin Schutte talking about the issues in front of the county right now. And we'll continue to have him on at his uh, desire. And when we have requests, he's very amenable to those things. Good to see you, Kevin. Absolutely.